What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, coming at you with the late night review of Atlanta United versus Montreal Impact. So, unfortunately I did not get to go to the game. Disappointing, but I did get to watch it live, and yeah, I mean, good 4-1 win. Definitely some moments of fright, but overall, um, definitely a good performance. A few issues here and there, but uh, the big thing that I do want to talk about is I do think we were actually helped by the fact that they scored early. Um, there is kind of a saying that you can score too early. I think in Montreal's case, the way they were set up to play from the very beginning of the game, when they scored, it was both the worst thing that could have happened at the time, but also the best thing that could have happened for the game overall for us. Uh, and what I mean by that is, as soon as they scored, I knew the next like 20 to 30 minutes, however long it was going to be, I knew it was going to be difficult uh, because the thing is they were already sitting deep, like very, very deep. And so when they scored, I'm thinking, yeah, now it's just going to be pretty much we'll leave one guy up top. Everybody else is just going to sit back, no doubt. And they did. And for a while, it got frustrating. It got, you know, we're not getting any chances. We're not getting through. However, because they scored so early, I think it was like the 13th minute, it's difficult to defend for 80 minutes like that. I mean, even with halftime coming in, it gives you a little bit of a break. When you've got so much pressure coming at you, it's difficult. It is very, very difficult to defend for that long. So I think the fact that they scored so early, I think if they hadn't scored that early, obviously it would have been us kind of pounding them, pounding them, pounding them. But I think if they hadn't scored early, it would have been kind of a, okay, we can hold on to this, You know, maybe we'll get one later, and then... You know, maybe if they get one breakaway later, then it's a lot more, it's a lot easier for them to defend for the next, like, 40 minutes instead of, you know, almost 80 minutes. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, just a little thing, but I do think that did help us, the fact that they scored early because it gave us a lot of time to just sort of pound them all over the field. With that being said, though, um, do have to look at some of Tata's decisions because he made some different decisions. Uh, first of all, the very first decision he made subbing at halftime, I was surprised. You know, for one, he typically makes, like, late subs, and also, most of the time when he subs, it's like, I don't know, it's not really anything different. Like, he just kind of replaces players. You know, brings on a wing for a wing, or a striker for a striker, so, stuff like that. This one, he actually made some subs that were different. Now, I will say, when he took off Jeff, <laughs> I was a little bit concerned, you know, because... Jeff is one of our best players in the midfield as far as the defensive side of things. And so I did feel like we were going to be a little bit exposed. And there were some times, especially when we scored and equalized, there were some times where I thought to myself, we really need Jeff now. You know, because we need somebody in there that's going to be a defensive player and really just keep everything shut down, pretty much, what I'm trying to say. Um, but, however, we managed to hold off. You know, our defense did well enough to keep them at bay. So I'm glad that we sort of kept things smooth for the majority of the game, even after we equalized. We just kept things moving along. Yes, they got some chances, but we kept creating chances as well. So now let's talk about individuals. First, Brad and goal. You know, once again, had to make some good saves. I mean, the goal that, it, that got scored, he, there's not much he could have done for it. It's a point-blank header coming right at him. Um, or not even right at him, it was like near him, but not really close to him. Um, and I think the biggest part of it is the fact that he's coming across the goal and it comes back that way. I mean, that's difficult. When you're moving this way and all of a sudden it's headed back that way, it's hard to get back across. So, not much he could have done for it. Uh, and aside from that, you know, the one problem I've been have with them, having with him is distribution. Didn't really have to distribute a lot in this game, so overall I did fine. Um, back three... Once again, Perez, Parker, McCann. I'm glad that we're not seeing a lot of change just because this lineup has been working very well. Why change it, right? Uh, but as far as their performances, Perez definitely had some issues here and there. You know, once again, it feels like he has these moments where he just gives the ball away willy-nilly. You know, sometimes his defending can be very flying in and then he just gets cut and it's just so easy uh, for the attacker to get past him. I don't know, there were, just, there were a lot of moments in this where I'm thinking to myself, he's back. 
you know, he's back to what I saw at the beginning of the season, and I don't want to feel like that. Now, obviously, in the new formation, it doesn't hurt us as badly because we do have Michael behind him to cover for him. But there are still moments where it's like you're giving the ball away in dangerous positions. Why? You know, why not just keep it simple and keep it safe? Anyway, um, Michael is in the center of the back three again, and once again, just solid, consistent. You know, for the most part, had to didn't have a whole lot to do. But whenever he was challenged, he did well to keep them at bay. And then Chris on the other side of Michael did okay. You know, one of the big things he had to do in this game was push a little bit more forward. Uh, just because we we were trying to like push forward and get, get a goal and try to get something out of the game. And so he was stepping forward quite a bit. Um, so you know, defensively, he's still working hard. He's still doing well there. And that's I think that's huge having somebody back there who's going to be a good defender um, and keep the other team from getting a lot of chances. So he's doing well. Hope to see the same stuff coming out of him every game because we need somebody back there like that. Um, as far as the wingbacks are concerned, Greg didn't really have that much of an impact on the game, if I'm being honest. Uh, just It felt like we weren't really going to his side, but whenever we did, he wasn't really doing much with it. You know, he would try to go down the line, but then get stopped and have to go back. It felt like a lot of his passes were negative. Like, he didn't really have room. Part of that is because Montreal just sat back, and so they had somebody always there to cover him. However, I wanted to see a little bit more cleverness from him, I guess. You know, creating something out of nothing type of thing, because he can do it. We've seen him play, you know, quick little one-twos around people, but he wasn't really doing it in this game for whatever reason. I just felt like he didn't have any ideas. So defensively, you know, he worked hard getting back, so that was good to see. But aside from that, didn't really see much from him. Uh, Julian, kind of back to last season, Julian for me, just wasted crosses, putting in balls. That it's like, why? You know, nobody's in. Uh, there are moments where it feels like just cut it back to somebody, but instead he's trying to cross and just hits it and it goes out of bounds. That's the Julian I remember from last season. That's the one everybody's like, oh, greatest rookie of the year. And I'm looking at him like, I don't see it. That's what I felt like, you know, <laughs> looking at him and everybody's raving about him and I'm just like, I don't, I don't see it. You know, yes, he's getting on the ball a lot. Yes, he's creating a lot of pressure, but there's no finishing product. There's nothing that he's providing. Everything that he's doing is just a waste almost. Um, so I don't know. It's just, maybe this is just a blip. You know, he did have one other bad game, I thought, against, uh, who was that? Was it NYC? I think it was NYC. So, I mean, he's had a couple off games here and there, but for most of the season, been doing well in this new position. So, I hope he doesn't start to just get comfortable and be like, eh, whatever, and just start screwing around because, I mean, honestly, he's stepped up so far, and I want him, I want to see him continue to do well, but this game was not a, it was a step back, in my opinion. It was a step back to what I saw a lot of last season, and that's not good. So, uh, in the middle, Jeff, like I said, very solid. There's one point I remember, um, I remember seeing this in another game too. I think it was the. I think it may have been the NYC game, possibly. I don't remember now, um, but there there was a game recently where it was like a one on one situation with someone and Michael. I think to myself, oh, this is dangerous. But Jeff's like coming behind, and you can just see him just working hard. So Michael stands him up, and he knows Jeff's coming. And it just causes the guy to take a touch, take a touch, take a touch. And then Jeff comes in and wins the ball from behind. And at that moment, I'm just like, that partnership right there is just brilliant. You got two of the smartest players on the field working together defensively to keep anything from happening. I don't know. Just watching him work defensively is so good. Um, so, I don't know. Jeff's one of my favorite players for a reason. He continues to show every game why he's vital in the midfield. So, great to see. Uh, Darlington... Has still had a pretty good game. You know, the passing was still very vital and keeping the ball moving around the field, making Montreal work, which was huge because it wears him out. But this game, he did have a few more issues defensively, especially on the goal. Uh, it's kind of a toss up whether Julian should have said something to him, you know, telling him to track, or, you know, should he have stepped two? Should Darlington have kept going with him? It was kind of a toss-up on who should have picked him up, but the problem is nobody did. And honestly, Darlington is the one that should be picking him up. You know, he should see the guy coming. He was with him until the cross came in, and they just kind of let him go. 
So, in my opinion, defensively, that was an issue. Um, and overall, you know, defense has not been the thing that I've noticed him for. I've noticed him for his passing. So I would like to see a bit of an improvement there just because that was something where last season we kind of had a similar situation where Jeff was the more defensive player. Uh, Carlos was a bit more the, like the linking up play, the good passes. Darlington stepped up and has done even better than Carlos was doing last year, which is great. Um, but Carlos was pretty good defensively as well. Yes, he was a little wild sometimes, but he was good at winning the ball back. He was good at trying to win the ball back. Sometimes I don't see Darlington doing that as much. And I don't know, that is a bit of an issue for me. So a little small thing, but something that I think needs to be worked on. And then we have um, Ezekiel, Miguel, and Joseph as kind of the front three again. It kind of gets confusing sometimes, like where their position is, because honestly, and this is something that I think works really well, they have freedom to play. You know, Ezekiel and Miguel, they have freedom to just roam wherever. And that's huge. Um, Miguel is definitely the more defensive of those two, though, and for a good reason. You know, he's very good at, he's got speed, and he's very good at getting around the player, poking the ball away, and winning it back. He does that very well. So I'm glad, you know, that he's doing that. Uh, whereas Ezekiel, much better on the ball. And so you give him the ball up top, and he has the speed and the quickness to turn and get away from a defender. So, uh, but as far as their performances, Miguel just worked very hard. There were a few moments in the first half where I felt like, once again, he's getting a little selfish. He's trying to do it all on his own. And that can be an issue sometimes. Because um, I think where he's best is whenever he gets away from a defender or two and then finds a pass and keeps the ball moving. Where sometimes it hurts us is whenever he gets away from that first two, but then he thinks he can beat one more, but then that leads he has to beat another one, and then and eventually he just loses it. Um, the only time I ever really want to see him like dribbling for long distances is whenever he gets in behind. Um, in the first half, he was kind of dribbling around in the midfield and causing us some issues. So, And then Ezekiel, once again, showing very, a lot of skill on the ball. You know, just very quick turns, getting around the defender, causing issues. You know, They step in, try to win it, and then he you know, ends up going down because they step into him. So, I don't know. I, very clever little player, and I think he's definitely showing he has the potential to be one of our better players uh, and then Joseph up top only the only player I really had an issue with you know I just I think he's dropping off again because I don't know what it is I don't know what sets him off but there's always something it feels like in every game that just sets him off and then all of a sudden he's not playing well you know, all of a sudden it's like he turns off and he's, and he's done I don't know why that is. I don't know what causes it, but they're just. It feels like it happens too much, and that's a problem when you're when you're a striker. You know, the guy you're supposed to be able to look to to get you a goal in a desperate situation. When he just shuts off entirely and doesn't work, that can be an issue. You know, and I just I feel like he's been in the slump for the past few games that he hasn't gotten himself out of. Ever since I think the New York City game really is when it started. I don't know what's going on with him, and I don't know why he gets into this mood, but. He's a very moody striker, for sure. Uh, and that it is an issue sometimes. So really hoping he can get himself out of this little slump and start to pick himself back up because we need him to perform. Um, even though we can do it without him and we've shown we can do it without him for the past couple games. However, it would help to have him at the top of his game, you know, finishing every chance, or not every chance, but, you know, whenever you've got a one-on-one -on -one chance cross right to your head and all you gotta do is just place it away from the keeper and you place it right at him twice <laughs> you know, head it at him and it falls to your feet and then you kick it at him again that shows that you're a striker with a problem so he's gotta get himself figured out uh, as far as the subs that came on though obviously Tito comes on at halftime coming back from an injury is always something where it's like how's he gonna do and you could see he's not quite the same as he was whenever he left. Uh, I do think he was having some issues as far as like you know, shooting and stuff. It felt like he was kind of being a little bit selfish and his finishing wasn't really all there. Um, however, he came in in this one and it felt like he was working very hard trying to get that fitness up, but also he was working hard for the team. You know, laying off some passes, it looked good overall. Um, but I do think it still needs to improve a bit as far as his effectiveness in the final third because 
I mean, we can't just have him, oh, I'm going to pop up with a great goal, like, once every 10 games. We needed to be a little bit more consistent with his finishing. Uh, but overall, I thought he worked hard. Kevin Kratz, obviously, the big, <laughs> the big substitution that comes on. Uh, two great free kicks. First one is something that, you know, it's kind of your typical good free kick. You know, up and over the wall, puts it away from the keeper. Love it. But the second one was just one, watching the replay, you watch it from behind, and yes, the keeper stepped the wrong way, but it's almost like he made him step the wrong way. But it was like, it started going straight, and then all of a sudden just whipped to that post. I'm just like, how does he do that? <laughs> um, so, and I, I, I don't know, Kevin was always a player, especially last season, I really respect it. You know, he always came off the bench, felt like he deserved a bit more time because he was very consistent, keeps the play simple, works hard defensively. I'm just like, I want to see more of him. And he's done well so far this season. And getting these two great free kick goals, it's like, yeah, let's, let's see a bit more of him. Let's see if he can keep working hard and doing well there. So, I don't know, I love it whenever players that I respect that don't really get a lot of time start to do well. It's like, yeah, justifying them getting some time. I like that. And then finally the last one was uh, Franco comes on. And at that point, it's just kind of like giving him some minutes, see how he's doing after uh, the head injury that he got from Brad. And I can't remember who he came on for. I remember Kevin came on for Greg, because at that point, we needed something. And so brought him on, moved to more of like a back four. I will say I don't really like the idea of Julian being our right back, uh, which pretty much is what happened whenever we made that change. Nothing, like I said, nothing against him, but he's not a defensive player. That's just, that's not his game. So, um, but once Franco came on, it definitely was more of like our typical formation with Franco, uh, Perez, and Michael as a back three, and then Chris and Julian as a wing back. So, at that point, it was just kind of like, all right, let's shut up shop. Let's not th let them have any more chances, any more goals, because I think it was 3 1 at that point. Um, so, you know, overall, like I said, it was a good game, great comeback. Good to see in the face of adversity we can overcome that. But take it with a grain of salt. I do think we were helped by the fact that Montreal, you know, they scored early and they tried to sit on that one nothing lead, and you can't do that against us. You know, not saying like, oh, we're just we're that good. We are Atlanta United and we're unstoppable. But when you have a team that is very attack minded, you know, I, honestly that is our big thing. We are very good in the attack. Defensively is where we sometimes hurt. You try to sit back against a team like that, and you try to do it for that long, eventually it's probably going to come. You know, unless you just get really lucky, and they were for a majority of the first half, um, unless you get really lucky for the entire game, eventually a goal is probably going to go in. And once it does, it's like that momentum will shift, and then you know goals are going to come after that. Uh, and especially because Montreal is more of a team that tends to, I mean, I don't know if that's the team they are this year, but based on what I've seen from them, they are a team that falls apart in the past few games. They fell apart in like the last 20-something minutes. And then once again, it did. So, you know, you gotta sort of look at this game and say, okay, yes, it was great performance. Yes, a great comeback, but there were some issues we need to fix. You know, defensively, still got some issues. Attack-wise, you know, gotta get a striker up there who's gonna work for the whole game and, you know, keep working. Uh, gotta figure out what's going on with him, why isn't he performing well, so little issues like that we need to figure out, but overall, once again, we uh, extend our unbeaten streak, another win, and it's, it's looking good for us, we're doing well, playing well, I'm excited to see what's gonna happen next, so, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below, what were your thoughts on this game, let me know, we can talk about and discuss all that good stuff, leave a like and subscribe, for your United Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next one, peace out.